Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the True Worshiper, February 2022. Amen. I got a good one for you today. Got a good one for you today. And um, I'm going to be reading out of chapter 13, the book of Acts. Acts chapter 13, starting at the 13th verse. And um, the Apostle Paul has been invited to give a word of encouragement. And what happens is um, Paul and Barnabas, they go, um, they're in Antioch, so they go to the synagogue for the, um, for the services, and um, for the Jewish services at the synagogue, where they, they read the um, books of Moses, and then um, and the books of the prophets. So while, while there are, once the services, before the services are over, um, the leaders um, in the synagogue, they, um, they asked Paul, the Apostle Paul and Barnabas, um, if they have any words of encouragement for the people to please come and give it. And Paul stands up and he lifts his hands and he quiets the people down before he speaks. Mind you, there are two sets of Jews and two sets of Gentiles. What I mean by sets, you have Jews that are for Jesus and then you have Jews that are against him. And you have Gentiles that are for Jesus, and you have Gentiles that are against him. And the Apostle Paul is going to preach the words of encouragement, but mind you, Paul knows who his listeners are. He knows that there are some unbelieving Jews who refuse to accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. He knows there are some Gentiles that refuse to accept Jesus Christ as the Savior. And he also knows that there are some Jews that will believe and do believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he knows that there are some Gentiles in the audience that do believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what Paul is facing. On the Sabbath, they went to the synagogue for the services. Verse 15, after the usual reading from the books of Moses and the prophets, those in charge of the service sent them this message. Brothers, if you have any words of encouragement for the people, come and give it. Like I said, that in the books of Acts, it has a three-part structure from Acts chapter 1 to Acts chapter 28. And the three-part structure is called the setup, the confrontation, and the resolution. Here Paul has just been invited to give words of encouragement to the people, to the Jews and Gentiles. And he's going to give this word to the believing Jews and the believing Gentiles and the unbelieving Jews and the unbelieving Gentiles. So this is the setup. 
So Paul stood, lifted his hands to quiet them and started speaking. Man of Israel, he said, and you God-fearing Gentiles, listen to me. The God of this nation of Israel chose our ancestors and made them multiply and grow strong during their stay in Egypt. Then with a powerful arm, he led them out of their slavery. He put up with them through 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Then he destroyed seven nations in Canaan, Canaan and gave their land to Israel as an inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After that, God gave them judges to rule until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people begged for a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, who reigned for 40 years. But God removed Saul and replaced him with David, a man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. And it is one of King David's descendants, Jesus, who is God's promised savior of Israel. Now, the Apostle Paul starts off giving a history lesson. Sometimes this is what we need to do, saints. You're getting a history lesson right now. How all this came up to be. Verse 23 says, And it is one of King David's descendants, Jesus who is God's promised savior of Israel. Before he came, John the Baptist preached that all the people of Israel needed to repent of their sins and turn to God and be baptized. As John was finishing his ministry, he asked, do you think I am the Messiah? No, I am not. But he is coming soon, and I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the sandals on his feet. Brothers, you sons of Abraham, and also you God-fearing Gentiles, this message of salvation has been sent to us. The people in Jerusalem and their leaders did not recognize Jesus as the one the prophets had spoken about. Instead, they condemned him. And in doing this, they fulfilled the prophets' words that are read every Sabbath. They found no legal reason to execute him, but they asked Pilate to have him killed anyway. When they had done all that the prophecies said about him, they took him down from the cross and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and over a period of many days, he appeared to those who had gone with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to the people of Israel, and now we are here to bring you this good news. The promise was made to our ancestors, and God has now fulfilled it for us. Mm. Their descendants, by raising Jesus, this is what the second psalm says about Jesus. You are my son, today I have become your father. For God had promised to raise him from the dead, not leaving him to rot in the grave. He said, I will give you the sacred blessing. I promised to David. Another Psalm explains it more fully. You will not allow your Holy One to rot 
in the grave. This is not a reference to David, for after David had done the will of God in his own generation, he died and was buried with his ancestors, and his body decayed. No, it was a reference to someone else, someone who God raised and whose body did not decay. Brothers, listen. We are here to proclaim that through this man, Jesus, there is forgiveness for your sins. Everyone who believes in him is made right in God's sight. Something the law of Moses could never do. Be careful. Don't let the prophet's words apply to you. For they said, look, you mockers. Be amazed and die. For I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe, even if someone told you about it. As Paul and Barnabas left the synagogue that day, the people begged them to speak about these things again the next week. Many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, and the two men urged them to continue to rely on the grace of God. The following week, almost the entire city turned out to hear them preach the word of the Lord. Now, this is like a revival. This is definitely a revival. But when some of the Jews saw the crowds, they were jealous. So they slandered Paul and argued against whatever he said. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and declared, it was necessary that we first preach the word of God to you Jews. Uh huh. But since you have rejected it and judged yourselves unworthy of eternal life, we will offer it to the Gentiles. For the Lord God gave us this command when he said, I have made you a light to the Gentiles to bring salvation to the farthest corners of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were very glad and thanked the Lord for his message. And all who were chosen for eternal life became believers. So the Lord's message spread throughout that region. Then the Jews stirred up the influential religious women and the leaders of the city, and they incited a mob against Paul and Barnabas and ran them out of town. So they shook the dust from their feet as a sign of rejection and went to the town of Iconium. And the believers were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Now, when they get to Iconium, the same thing happened in Iconium. Paul and Barnabas went to the Jewish synagogue and preached with such power that a great number of both Jews and Greeks became believers. Some of the Jews, however, spurned God's message and poisoned the minds of the Gentiles against Paul and Barnabas. But the apostles stayed there a long time, preaching boldly about the grace of the Lord. And the Lord proved their message was true by giving them power to do miraculous signs and wonders. But the people of the town were divided in their opinion about them. Some sided with the Jews, and some with the apostles. Then a mob of Gentiles and Jews, along with their leaders, decided to attack and stone them. When the apostles learned of it, they fled to the region of Lycaonia, to the towns of Lystra and Derbe, and the surrounding areas. And there they preach the good news. Brothers and sisters, I read this message today. 
this word today because we are always preaching to a divided group of people. We are always going to be preaching the word to a divided group of people. And there are always going to be people who are not for you and who are not for Jesus Christ doing everything they can, they can, saying everything they want to about Jesus, about his preachers, his pastors, his ministers. They're going to do everything to stop you from believing the word of God. When your salvation is being interfered with or hindered, or blocked you must stand you must choose who are you going to believe this day are you going to believe the words from the unbeliever are you going to be the words from the believer of Jesus Christ? The Apostle Paul and Barnabas, after preaching the good news, they were attacked they were stoned they were ran out of town and they didn't stop preaching they didn't turn their backs on the lord jesus christ or their faith brothers and sisters has anyone or anything stopped you from worshiping God? Has anyone or anything stopped you from praying and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ? Examine yourself because there should be nothing on this earth that has the power to separate you from the love of God, from the love of Christ, from salvation, from studying the word, from reading the word. There should be nothing to stop you. Well, that's all I have for you, saints. That's all I have for you today. I'm going to give it a rest today. I'll see you Sunday. Lord, say the same. I'm going to let you rest. I pray that this message will help you. It will help you in your witness. If you ever wanted to know, how can I witness? How can I be a light? How can I be an apostle and a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ? All you have to do is speak the same words that the apostle Paul spoke when he was speaking to believers and unbelievers alike. Speak the same words. the words of salvation. That's all that God is asking from you. Amen. Remember these words. Remember what they did to our Savior. And remember, always be mindful that God lives in you. You don't have to be afraid. God lives in you. And you live in him. Amen. 
Hey, God bless you. This is the true worshiper. I hope and pray that I'm alive so I can come back with another good word for you. Subscribers, keep listening. I thank God for you each and every day. And I hope and pray that you are getting something out of this. Amen. I hope it blesses you. God bless you. My birthday is Monday. I'll be 59 years old. And I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. I hope God gives me um, many more years. Because with all that he gives me, I'm going to continue on. Let my light shine and preaching the good news. God bless you. I'll see you next time.